after three years of futility, Christoph Porzingis finally made his exodus from Dallas. It is no secret that him and Luka apparently did not get along. It's no secret that Christoph Porzingis was the unicorn, and he embodied that because half the time he was not available, so you didn't see him. Thank you, Tim Legler. But, I mean, it is... It's crazy because when this trade went down a few years ago, there were a lot of people, myself included, who thought, oh, wow, the Mavs actually have a chance here to do something very special, to build something long-lasting. That's that's out of that's down. That's gone. Uh, so Porzingis is gone. He's going to the Wizards. Uh, Dinwiddie comes in. We'll get what, to what this means for Dallas. But, Andrew, I need to ask you, what went wrong for Porzingis in Dallas specifically? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Like he barely ever played. He was always hurt when he did play. He, you know, he'd put up a, he'd put up like a Lonzo ball, triple single stat line. He's the tallest dude on the court. He was getting out rebounded sometimes by guards. Um, he has games some nights where it's like, you're literally the tallest dude on the court. And yet your, your, your stat line is like six points. You're like two, two of 12 from the field or something like that. You know, guards are out rebounding you. You're not going to get assists, obviously. That's that's Luka. And it's like... And then you had the balls to, you know, sit there and talk shit about the Knicks and everything like that. And it's karma. Because I, I, I actually remember ever since that trade, I, I don't know. We have, our, we have a very good winning percentage against Dallas since that trade, by the way. Like, I don't know if we... We might be undefeated. We're not undefeated, but I'm pretty sure we might only have like one or two losses in the span of like the four years since since that trade went down. So, I mean, he's he's. I think he's another one, dude. His next stop when it doesn't work out because it's not going to work out in uh, Washington. His next stop is is going to be L.A., dude. His next stop is going to be out there with the Lakers. Yeah, I mean. Uh, for me, the biggest thing with Porzingis, the reason why this didn't work out was he was brought in. Porzingis was brought in to be the guy who could take pressure off of Luka Doncic in big moments. He was brought in to be the guy, oh, can he give me 20 and 10 off uh, as the second guy on this team? Can he fill that Robin to the Batman that is Luka? If he could fill that role, well, it would have been great. It would have been a great partnership. But I, I think that this didn't work for two reasons. One, I think Porzingis just was unable to fill that role. And it's because of injuries, it's because of attitude, it's because of, I also think, a little bit of just spite. I genuinely think there was a bit of spite there, because Luca he got there when Luca was kind of like, you know, Luca had, had just won Rookie of the Year, people were like, oh man, this kid is really good, and then all of a sudden, Luca just becomes this dominant superstar, like... MVP level superstar that Porzingis in all due respect will never achieve that level of stardom he will never achieve that level of talent on the basketball court and there was a little bit of spite there and that kind of went into with the attitude the fact that he wasn't playing well at a lot of times especially in the playoffs in the playoffs it was just he disappeared when when Dallas needed him he's like the avatar he's like Aang from Avatar the Last Airbender when Dallas needed him most he vanished, and he went away for a hundred years in a block of ice with his giant bison, never to return again. It is, it's insane that this didn't work because if he had understood his role, I think it, it could have. I'm not blaming him for injuries. I'm not blaming him for maybe some of the schemes that that Rick Carlisle was was doing because they, they, those weren't like perfect scheming. It wasn't perfect scheming all the time. Rick Carlisle. He, they should have they should have been they should have been making sure that he took pressure off of Luca throughout the season. They should have made sure that these two could play on the court at the same time throughout the season. Instead, they they would always split them up, which was so weird to me because you're going to need your best players playing together when the moment counts. You might as well get them used to it. And whenever the playoffs came around, it just seemed like okay, Porzingis, you're a non-factor in this. It, it just ended up being Luca playing Luca ball and having to score 60 points a game, whatever he was doing, 60, 10, and 15, all that crap he was doing against the Clippers and then trying to will his team to a win. It, it just didn't work. 
And I think it kind of proved you, uh, you guys right. I think it proved a lot of Knicks fans right about Luca and, and or sorry, Porzingis, I should say, and what he really was this whole time. Yeah, I mean, injury prone, you know, exceptional talent, everything like that. But, you know, what good is talent if you if it's not, you know, on the court, if you can't, you know, use it. So, hey, there was a video of him uh, shooting from the bench or behind the bench in Washington, you know what? And, frankly, I, I agree. He got so used to sitting on that thing, so used to sitting out there that he figures I'll shoot, start shooting from out there. And it is what it is. Wish him good luck in Washington, though. Wiz, Wiz got a squad. The Wiz do have a squad. Hey everyone, we hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Until next time, keep it real.